Hare Krishna. During my times, uh, those people who are selected uh, under the National Science Talent Scholarship, they automatically got invitations from different IITs. So I didn't even know about it uh, and uh, I, I did qualify for the National Science Talent Award and I was invited by IIT Bombay. That's the first letter that I got. So then uh, they had a five-year integrated MSc Physics and uh, uh, I thought it's a great opportunity. It's a, I was specifically interested in physics right from my uh, high school days. And uh, that's how, you know, by invitation I joined. So the cause of all the causes was always a fascination for me. And that was, I was being driven, you know, internally towards, uh, you know, finding that out. Uh, but in IIT, there was, you know, classes, there were tutorials, then weekly exams started. And over and above all that, the relative grading. And uh, <laughs> that was um, when the results started coming in and uh, the pressure I could not take after six months, eight months. Then, uh, you know, in IIT, everyone gets a chance to switch over the branch after two years. So then uh, I decided that uh, I definitely can't uh, study, uh, you know, the physics the way I want to study physics. I want to pursue inquiry into the truth. So I just uh, decided I'd look for the most easiest uh, most uh, or least wanted uh, branch was civil branch in those days. So I just uh, took civil branch to have a, uh, you know, more life of more freedom. The IIT library also had a very good uh, section on uh, philosophy. So every day I used to spend time from four to nine or five to nine in the library and uh, uh, read these books. So I started with all the Western philosophy and all those because I, I didn't know Sanskrit, so I could only go where, whatever translations were there, even of our Indian philosophy. So I started with Western philosophy, then you know Eastern philosophies, all these things I I, I, I went through. The, then it, it moved to the question of you know you know the 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 wonderful design that is around everywhere in the in, in nature. Since I was already, you know, so much deep into physics, I could see there was so much beauty in physics, uh, in, the, in the, the equations, in the nature, harmony, and uh, symmetry, and all these things were very, uh, they were quite beautiful. But one thing actually never struck me was because this is a trap of both modern uh, Western science as, as well as uh, even the uh, one school of thought in Indian philosophy. There's a, we start off with the presumption that, that that ultimate absolute truth is not a person. It is not a person who can think, feel and will. Must be some force, must be some this, some shapeless, formless, whatever it may be. Cannot, because we, we have assigned limitations to all these concepts. We have assigned limitations to form, name, etc. So once we think of God, we think, I mean, we are always thinking of, you know, the limitless one. So we, 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 we cannot relate form to a limitless thing. And it was very, uh, so obviously, you know, you tend to think that um, the, um, the idea of God uh, should be beyond, beyond uh, having personal characteristics. So we thought, okay, now um, we are going to jump off the main building and <laughs> going to commit suicide and put a suicide note too. Then we found a very interesting way of writing the suicide note. That that day we had a test, a uh, weekly test, and on the answer paper we wrote down the whole story. We are committing suicide, we are jumping out of the main building. <laughs> and uh, and then, uh, you know, that day after that, uh, after the test I went to the library and I was sitting in the library, uh, as usual, uh, you know, walking down the aisle and, and uh, um, uh, looking on both sides of the books. On, on the right side, I had these uh, books of Prabhupada. Uh, these were the books that uh, uh, you know, of our founder Acharya Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. That book was titled Krishna. You know, that is a summary of the tenth skanda of Srimad Bhagavatam. 
So I read that. then uh, I read the you know first page. Uh, the most important thing that struck me was it said that the absolute truth is a person, and then it says absolute truth is a person who is limitless. And there it was, you know, for me, I, had, I knew that this person, Prabhupada, is speaking, he knows the truth and is not just giving me intellectual answers, but is actually speaking about the truth, what, what reality is. And uh, this was, a, 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 immediately I had tears in my eyes and I knew that, you know, what I was looking for all these years. Here is the you know, the field where I can explore. Um, so uh, once I decided that you know I'm going to take up this um, line in my life, um, I uh, spoke to my parents. My father was a scientist in uh, in Isro, and um, and he was shocked. Hey, I didn't expect you to go to IIT and you know not do a job and just get out and do you know pursue your adventure <laughs> for him it was for in, in, it was my luxury it was a luxury that I was taking up but uh, you know I, I really could see that uh, there's nothing um, uh, bottom line I was required for my family or anything they were already well off but now my dad was not very happy about it uh, but uh, within uh, two, three years, uh, initially I was in the same, I went and joined ISKCON in the same place in Trivandrum. And I started a lot of uh, activities there. And uh, within three, four, three years, uh, you know, a lot of uh, good name in the society was coming. And, uh, you know, as I said, my original question was how things work. So how this thing works, God helps those who help themselves, you know, practically I've seen and and that builds so much of confidence in you. First is, one, is you're not doing for yourself. Second, you're doing for mankind. And then you, you know that God is with you. Just imagine the level of self-confidence and, you know, uh, that you have. You don't feel a sense of limitation. You really go on working and you see tremendous things happen. Just like the Akshay Patra. We started with 1,500 children. And then uh, at that time, you know, you know, many of the friends, uh, our donors, so one was one of the persons uh, who came uh, and in, and uh, 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 triggered this Akshapatra program was Mohandas Pai of Infosys. So one day he came to my office and he was sitting here and uh, he uh, told me, Swamiji, uh, uh, you are doing excellent work. You have built this temple and everything, and then you know, thousands are coming to this temple and you are feeding them every day. This is great, Swamiji. But out there, there are, you know, a uh, lot of children who are in the school. And uh, MGR started this program and it made a tremendous difference in their lives. So he quoted the MGR's midday meal program. He said, Swamiji, why don't you add that dimension? What you, you are feeding people who are coming here. We're going to go and feed the people who really need it. That people, um, especially in the case of Akshay Patra, people say, oh my God, you're a great visionary. You had, I said, no, somebody else had the vision. The Lord had the vision. And we had to become instruments in fulfilling that vision. And because I frankly know that I didn't have the vision ever to feed this number of children. We wanted to feed as many as possible, but not this, it's mind boggling. Then um, automatically to, to create so many tons of food, I had to design a kitchen and went ahead and designed a, a special kitchen for it. And uh, we started feeding, then somebody else came, one more vehicle, one more vehicle. Then uh, the press came and by itself it went to about five, 6,000, it just took on, you know, 6,000 children. And then in those days, there was no midday meal program in Karnataka. It was uh, talked off in the whole Bangalore city. 6,000 children are being fed by ISKCON. And I remember when it was just, uh, you know, 15,000, I went before the Lord 
and the deities and I was, then I was little panicking and then I said finally you know you apply your knowledge no so I said okay you are the lord of the universe what is there I'm not doing it for myself I mean doing for the needy children you are the supreme lord you supreme father what there could not be shortage of anything so why should I worry I should just carry on with my work and uh, you can see you know it's just about eight years back I said that and today you know we are sitting with the reality of feeding you know 1.2 million children every day. This kind of uh, selfless service, then uh, it's going to be very rewarding experience for many of them, uh, for many of you who have already been successful in your business, in your industry, in your in your profession. You have been already successful. Uh, okay, fine. That's a phase of life, and your life will be more complete. If you give all that you learned, not only in IIT and everything else all these years for the betterment of the rural India, so that the underprivileged, starting from children to the tribal uh, population, what not, many of the IITians I have spoken to have, they do not know what's real India. And I assure you that the happiness that you would derive out of taking up this kind of a service, that pleasure you would have never experienced and it's a new dimensional pleasure for you to do this kind of a service.